Welcome to our first meeting in May, a hybrid meeting. We have people online and we have people in the room. Today's presenter is Belinda Ferrier. Belinda, come on up. Belinda has an extraordinary background she's going to share with us and extraordinary aspirations for her new business. Good morning, everyone. It's really a pleasure to join all of you this morning. And I want to thank Ken and the entire volunteer team for making this possible. I just kind of want to be up front with you all first and foremost, before we jump in. And that is, I am very, in the very early stages of building my business. I think I have a great concept. I already have a few great leads, but I'm really looking for your insights, your best practices, and uh, just some of the wisdom of group to help push me to the next phase of my development in my company. Thank you. So with that said, there are a couple of uh, questions that are really foundational for me at this stage that I'm looking for your insights about. The first is, as you'll hear when I talk about my company a bit more, uh, I will need to rely on a network of cre content creator specialists or production specialists or SME specialists, people who are SEO rather, I should say, specialists, people who have a background in particular areas, as I continue to develop those gaps in my own understanding and um, continue to build a team that can provide wraparound services for potential clients. The other piece is that I have found that when people learn more about my background or I give my initial pitch, there's something in the delivery that um, makes potential clients sometimes a bit hesitant to continue the conversation fearing that they can't afford my services before we even begin to have a conversation about them. In this, uh, with this group, I've already had some good suggestions about how I can overcome that barrier, but I'm really interested in some of your insights as well about taking things from an initial conversation to getting potential clients to really sit down and talk to you about what you can do and then later about costs. Next slide, please. Thank you. Just a bit about my background. Uh, I have uh, over 20 years of experience in the foreign service working as a diplomat. My uh, specialization was largely in crisis management and risk management. When I was overseas, my focus is on something called public diplomacy, which is really managing the brand, the message, um, and the way that people view the United States overseas. And that can be done through media work, cultural affairs and host of other tools. So those were my focuses and I leveraged both that national security experience and my communications experience working at Google and trust and safety. And I think what makes my Google experience different and particularly my YouTube experience different is it was not just about engaging with creators or learning more about the systems and the algorithm. I have a keen understanding of the trust and safety issues behind what you do on the internet, behind what you're putting out there as a brand or as a company. And so I both understand how the systems work and I understand how to keep you safe and how to avoid problems as well. Next slide, please. So in terms of a timeline, I uh, you know, have only recently begun this journey this year. I'm hoping that by early summer, I can you know, kind of have things in full gear. Right now, I'm in kind of initial conversations with a few potential clients. I have uh, locked down a couple of consultation uh, deals, one with a local university and one with a small federal agency. Uh, but I'd like to continue to expand that um, and build on the experiences I'll have in those spaces. I currently am focused on um, organizations within the DMV, but uh, you'll see in a moment that I am interested in expanding that, um, frankly, globally, where I think my experience really resonates. Next slide, please. So I wanna talk a bit about the business and a bit about uh, you know what problems I think that I can solve. So my hope is to develop a strategic communication firm that's going to be able to leverage my national security policy and tech experience and be able to develop tailored communications plans specifically for civil society 
um, and civic organizations, political groups, and change makers, those who are trying to uh, work in essentially the social entrepreneurship space. So that is what I'm hoping to do. I think that I have the experience to help people engage audiences, drive action, calls to action to their audiences, and to build trust and authenticity, which is something that I have a lot of experience doing in my past work. I see a couple of challenges um, and opportunities for the business, right? And that what I can solve. The media landscape is closing and people find themselves in increasingly smaller and smaller kind of media spaces. Think to yourself how um, someone may be on threads, but not on X, for example, or on Instagram, but maybe not truth social. So the digital landscape is becoming tighter and tighter. It is increasingly difficult to reach people through traditional means like email campaigns or, you know, print media or ads. And um, I think that for many organizations in that civil society, social entrepreneurship space, they are working very hard to kind of, you know, achieve their mission. And they are relying on many of these uh, mechanisms to communicate with their audiences that are not as strategic and maybe holding them back a bit. I um, am seeing an opportunity there to be able to help people develop a long-term strategy that will take advantage of a multitude of tools, not just digital tools, and to be able to kind of touch people where they are. Uh, next slide, please. Right now, I'm generating revenue through a podcast that I have, uh, through this consulting work, and, and through coaching. I'm hoping to build up uh, an opportunity to, to have uh, additional revenue through speaking engagements. Next slide, please. So right now, if you think about dividing how work happens, maybe through head and hands and head or hands or head and hands together, I'm kind of in the head space. I want to be able to sit down with people and provide strategy. What I'm looking for ideas on today is how do I help get the hands? How do I help build a team or how, how do I build a team um, that can help me implement the strategies that I help people find? Think. The rest of the self is fine to forward. Again, as I said, my target audience is in that social entrepreneurship space and with civil society. I'm also in a conversation right now with a major foundation that's suggesting that they could provide funding to me and I would support creators who they are working with. So that is a model I had not thought of, but one that I'll continue to explore. Next slide, please. When I look at competitors in this space, there are actually many, many companies who are providing uh, this, these types of services, particularly to nonprofits. Um, what I notice is that they are providing a multitude of services. They just have a grab bag of anything that you need. I would like to remain more specialized, but I do see that as a potential benefit that clients will want. They don't quite know what they need, and it's helpful to know that company X has everything that they could possibly want. So I have to think about that a little bit. How am I going to communicate my niche? Next slide, please. So right now, um, because things are early, I think it's just about building a reputation and you know doing the basics, landing with these first two clients that I have, uh, using that to leverage future clients, and just kind of getting the word out about me and the services that I offer and doing the work. And finally, we'll return to the questions. You know, what are some of your best practices? Are there any insights that you might be able to share on these two issues? Thank you. <laughs> okay, should I sit? As or... I promised you, Yes. Belinda has a great background and a great story. Stay right here. I'll stay here. And um, remind me who's moderator this morning. Belinda. Okay, take over. So we have the, Belinda, first of all, great, great presentation. Really appreciate it and enjoyed it. 
And I was going to tease and say, this is the Belinda and Melinda show. <laughs> Don't get to say that often. <laughs> so what we do is raise your hand if you've got a question. I know Amy is applauding, which is great. And John Norris is jumping up and down. <laughs> Um, I don't see everybody, obviously, in Fairfax City, so if I miss somebody, let me know. Um, I'm going to start with John, and then I have James uh, with questions. So go ahead, John. Hey, first of all, Belinda, that was phenomenal. Thank you so much. I'm sure on behalf of everyone, we are all excited about you embarking, and you communicated very well to us your presentation, which speaks volumes about the services you'll provide to clients. Thank you. Thank Ma, you. Just if you would tell us a little more about the two contracts you're working on now. You said a small agency, I wrote it down, and uh, uh, maybe something at one of the schools? Yeah. So, yeah, a little more about your services. Right, right. So the one with the university is aimed at me helping them develop an outreach and recruitment strategy for a specific fellowship program. Um, okay. and, and then it is aimed at... Um, helping those who are accepted into the program develop a kind of rollout strategy as to how they announce that to the world. I guess right now they, mm -hmm. they don't want to keep running around on TikTok doing crazy stuff. So helping them <laughs> come up with an appropriate way of celebrating uh, their uh, acceptance into the program. The okay. other with the agency lies more on the leadership development side of my skill set okay. and that is helping this particular agency take a review of their senior leadership structure there are some communications challenges there and some organizational challenges uh, in terms of the way that information is flowing and they're kind of um asking uh I, i'm just kind of known in certain circles for fixing you know coming in and fixing organizations so they're asking me to come in for a few months, look at that and offer some opportunities for improving their communication with their head of agency. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have James, Ken, and then Jen. Thank you. That was a great presentation. Thanks for doing that. Um, I'm trying to, can, can I get a little bit more clarity? And again, I'm not the smartest guy on the planet and... <laughs> I, I, I'm 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 still a little bit confused about what the core offer or the core solution is. Yeah. What it is that your company is doing. Right. So no, can you maybe clarify that just a little bit more? <laughs> so the core thing that I want to be able to do. So I, I'll use an example of I, I'm volunteering right now with a nonprofit and helping them do the core thing that I want to do, which is this particular nonprofit, their issue is that they have on average zero hits on their website. They would like to draw traffic to their website so that they can begin to get an increasing number of small donors. They have a very small presence that's not getting any resonance on social media platforms. And they want to develop as well an opportunity to, de to develop relationships with local, particularly women entrepreneurs who may become big donors in the future. So I have worked with them to um, think about kind of core improvements to their website, to rethink their social media strategy, to think about what are the core audiences that they are looking at and reach out to those core audiences specifically with the appropriate tools. And then we are, have also developed a series of events and kind of key contacts that they are going to begin to develop a relationship with with a plan by the end of the year to have a big ask for this core of like 50 women entrepreneurs in the DMV who they want to begin to have long-term ties with. So it's kind of a three-prong strategy, but the core there is that I am offering my assistance developing a strategy of how they can improve their contact right. with their core audiences and get to the solution that they want, which is an increase in donors 
and both small donors and long-term okay. high value donors. I don't know so, if that helps. No, it, it absolutely does. And, and the reason I asked is the, in a startup situation, early stage business, I've I, just in this conversation, Linda, I've heard you give me three different types of businesses and three different offerings, three different solutions to three different problems. And and I would suggest that one of the things that you might want to look at is where does your genius really lie mm. and, and build your core for that genius and focus on that first to yes. kind of build up traction um, around that problem. So whatever problem you're solving in that piece of genius that you have, um, generally, I, I try and dissuade my clients in early stage to be looking at too many different solutions to two problems. Um, you might package it. You might put it in a wrapper, right? A little bit differently. Um, but to me, that's, that, that might be where some of the challenges are coming up for you a little bit. Yes, I'm, I'm looking how do you build a network of specialists and SMEs, right? So first things first is understand what the core offering is. Second thing, understand what your gap is in that core offering. Third, then the third thing is build a list of what do I need to fill that gap and then just start working it back that way. All right? That sounds a little simplistic, but... It oh, no, no. The fundamentals are critical. No, I All appreciate right? that. And that is something that I have struggled with. And as, as I, I maybe didn't say um, initially, one challenge I have is that to succeed in the diplomatic service, one needs to be a generalist. I need to today be an immigration specialist and six months later be a counter yeah. specialist. And so mm -hmm. something that I have struggled with in this post-diplomatic life, yeah. exactly what you've said. Identify nobody, yeah, nobody wants to pay for a generalist. Right. No one wants to pay for that. I agree. We want specialists. So yes. and by the way, I'm happy to have a conversation offline about that if, if you want it. No, no, no. I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. And it's something that I'm struggling with developing and, each each with each passing week I get closer to it, but it's there's still a struggle. All right, thank, thank you. you. Next we have Ken, then we have Jen, then we have Emmanuel, we have Jill, and then we have me. So first, let me reassure Belinda that we will be providing you with oh, okay. a recording <laughs> and uh, a copy of the transcript oh, and a copy of the chat. Perfect. So you can concentrate on what's right. happening so I won't take notes. and right. not on reporting. Okay, thank you. So, uh, what I'd like to talk about a little bit is uh, on top of what James was saying about developing focus, the, uh, the question, what problem do you solve, comes into play in building relationships and putting deals in place. Yeah. Because when you say, to, somebody says, well, what do you do? You say, well, I solved this problem. Do you have it? Yeah. And they say, yeah, I have it. And you, okay, let's talk about it some more some other time. Are you available A, B, C, D? But then the next step is to let them tell you about their problem. And then you begin to tell them you can solve it. And once you've shown them how you can solve it, they will pay you any amount of money that is available to them because it's a problem that they need to have solved. So the the issue that Jim James is raising about focus, the specific problem you solve that you can communicate in an effective way to grab people's attention. So that's how you start building relationships and putting deals in place. Agree. Agree. I think something I'm struggling with is the right way to put it into words, right? That so what I just described that I'm doing with the nonprofit and the frequent requests I get from other small companies or organizations to provide that same type of strategic guidance, you know, like our web, our, our YouTube isn't driving traffic. Can you offer us suggestions? Our uh, Facebook is not as effective as it should we be on a different platform. The solutions that I offer are effective. I don't quite know. People are asking me for the thing that James has described. What is your genius? I I don't quite know the words yet to describe it the other way, right? That's that's why I think I'm struggling with. Like it's there. I don't know quite how to say it. Put my hand down and answer that on the next round. <laughs> next we have Jen, Emmanuel, Jill. 
me and then John Norse. Oh, yeah. No, what I think I heard, let me know if this is accurate. That's going to be a little wordy. But you leverage your diplomatic background, your international expertise, your messaging expertise to help connect organizations in a very intentional, meaningful way to their audiences. Right. And so I do think you're a generalist, but you're also a specialist. Your specialist is knowing. I need to get people to take action. How do I get them to do that? Because anybody can come up with a message, but to get people to act is different. Mm -hmm. And if your diplomatic expertise helps really resonate with social entrepreneurs or people who are driving change globally, locally, regionally, nationally, then your diplomatic background is a unique skill set. Yes. And that ability to communicate, oh, that's your zone of genius. It's, you know, yes, you have to be a generalist. You have to know a lot of different things because you have to be able to build communications that match those. Yeah. So anyways, that's my my one thought. Um, one of the questions I put in chat was, do you like working with social fellowship programs? Basically, I definitely have connections I can talk with you offline, mm -hmm. but if it is that international social change, social entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. that's a very targeted market. Mm -hmm. So and that, that is, is that, that where you wanna be? Trying to be. Okay. Thank you. I can help with that. Thank you for, thank you for both suggestions. <laughs> Next, we have Emmanuel, Jill, me, and John Norse. Good morning, Belinda. Thank you for your presentation. Excellent presentation. Uh, what I heard from you, you are basically focusing on uh, uh, civil societies, and you also said something about public diplomacy. Uh, and, I, and I think you focus is for organizations that are focusing in Africa, uh, doing, some, doing some kind of business in Africa because that's your diplomatic background. I, I think your, uh, your strength is uh, the uh, drive for the United States to go to Africa. Uh, there that you know you you know well uh, that how much the U.S. is pushing to compete with the other countries in uh, in Africa, and I think your core is the consultation and the way you can inform people is going to be through the writing uh, and you know the podcast the the information that you provide. Uh, for for these people and what they can do. I think you are primarily focused on this uh, civil society organizations and nonprofit groups, and you're not focusing on the uh, businesses that are trying to get a foothold in Africa. And I, and I think that's also an opportunity that you can uh, focus on. Uh, so uh, I, I would love to be able to maybe uh, sit down and talk with you to see, uh, as an African, I always think about ways to go back, you know, especially with my travel services to uh, to Africa, uh, you know, educational tours and all those kinds of things. And so there are uh, uh, lots of things that you can do. A lot of uh, companies are interested to go to Africa right now. Uh, the United States, the State Department is pushing uh, for a lot of that. And, you know, I know that because, you know, I follow on the things and the developments. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, really exciting, and uh, if you can streamline, I think your your genius is your consultation, your knowledge, uh, the you know the things that you know about Africa and where Africa can go, and the hopes that you can uh, provide for others to, to to tell them this is what Africa can provide. And I think that's uh, the advocacy is all good, you know how, how you can uh, make change and all that. But I think the change in Africa is going to come about with the economic change that are taking place in Africa, and it's very, very fast. Uh, a lot of Americans have absolutely no idea, uh, no, no, not, you know, slight uh, uh, bad intention here when I say that pe people don't have any idea what's going on in Africa, but the opportunities in Africa are 
immense, and and I think that's where uh, your genius is, if you can express that. Let me just quickly tell everybody that uh, time is short. We only yep. have an hour here. Yes. Uh, uh, my apologies. That's okay. It was very Thank you, Ken. That's great. <laughs> I needed to do that, and I'm glad Ken spoke up. I, um, I would say, Melinda Prager, Emmanuel, I completely agree. Let's touch base offline, because that is something that um, I thought a lot about, but haven't. Um, yeah, I think that could be helpful. That's great. Jill, you're next, then me, then John, and great. Go ahead, Jill. Great. Thanks. Uh, so I'm, I'm the noob, so I'm going to jump in here. Um, I like what I'm hearing from you, and I'm really interested in your business. Your first question, how do I build a network of specialists? Uh, I think this exact thing that you're doing today is one of those things. I'd like to connect with you offline because I think our services are complementary where you're offering communication. Um, your clients may need program and project management support to rescue projects. And the second piece, the one thing I see is um, what does success look like for someone who's working with you? I, I, I think we fall into a trap of delivering here's what I can do for you. But what I really want to know is what is the change that I, your customer, am going to feel or see after working with you? And, and how does that map to your passion? Because I think the one thing I don't see is, do you want to change the world? I, I am a problem solver. I want to solve your problem. I am uh, so that I can enable you to be more productive. That's my passion. What is your passion and how does that affect how you choose who you work with? Because that's going to drive your success. Thank you. Those are really good questions. I'll think on that. Appreciate it. I'm happy to connect. I'm going to jump in for the next person with questions or whatever. And the one thing that I wanted to suggest is something I've done because I've been a generalist, but I specialize in all areas of marketing and I've built my team. And what I've done in building my team is that way I can use people on the team as part of my introduction to the organization when I go back to them with a proposal saying, we've got these people on the team that can will be working with us. Don't know if you plan to say it, stay a solo entrepreneur and work with teams. That's what I have done. Or if you want to really grow your business and have a whole bunch of people that are working for you in your organization. You need to think about that on how you want to go forward. But if you can think about the different types of things you're doing right now, are you doing it all by yourself or are you working with other uh, consultants to help you execute and help you with the ideas? Uh, that will help you, again, move forward with that team that you're trying to build. And you may have a couple of teams because you'll look you can have team meetings with the team and you could go after business for everybody. Um, it's just a big picture, stepping away and looking at it and saying, how do you want to do this? How do you want it to happen? Thank you. No John, problem. you're up. Yes. Norse and then Rutenberg. Well, no, I'm on camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Belinda, I'm going to tell you, I think I'm one of many people here that will tell you you're extremely impressive. And I'm sitting there just going, how can I work with this woman? She, You are the real deal. I, what my suggestion to you is, I think you were blessed with a tremendous amount of talent. And I think you're good at a lot of things. And what I would do is maybe spend time doing like your own SWOT analysis and see what your real strengths are. Like, where's your real, like, where do you really kick butt? And then where do you probably say, I'm not, and then match that with something like, where, what do you love doing? What part of that work do you feel like you just thrive and that you're living your best life? And those probably would, and then that would be who would, how I would identify who your clients would be. Like what work is it that really fires you up and gets you motivated and excited about waking up and everything? Because I think you have so many gifts that it also can be a curse because you're good at I can do that. I can do that. And then you get stuck doing things that maybe aren't maximizing your abilities and your revenue, things like that. Thank so you. That would be my Isn't suggestion. Coach, appreciate it. <laughs> Next, we have John. Yeah, Belinda, all I can say is John Norse speaks the truth. <laughs> 
and I could end right there, but a couple of more things. One, follow up with me, and I'll try to do it without the follow-up, but Michael Butera, who presented here maybe two months ago and occasionally tries to attend, is a nonprofit specialist. You and he ought to chat. That's one thing. Second thing, I saw that you... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm now going to your challenge question. Um, I'm confident you can narrow down your genius and expertise into a couple of four sentences. Just don't be modest. You are humble and all those things. I think a great way to meet the people and to find the clients is to use your excellent communications uh, skills to make presentations the moment for marketing purposes and that you will get recognized by allied professionals, complementary people, skilled people who in the future might be teammates. And, you know, before you want them as your teammate, you got to know them, like them and trust them. No different. Client has to know, like, and trust you. So it might be a good strategy, uh, which takes me to my last point. You know, all these goals are phenomenal, but you can't do them by tomorrow. So you're going to listen to uh, the tape, the video of our program today, and you got to maybe recognizing where you want to be in six months. Pay out 30, 60, 90 days. Because there's a lot on the table. Because you have the skills, girl. Yeah. You can package them. And there are great people who can help you. In your message, by the way, speak to the actions, the results you produce. Because that's the benefits. There, I can do that. And thank Next, you. Jen. Thank you for stepping up. Next, we've got Jen. Oh, I had a thought, because you are so amazing, I think it'd be very easy for you to get a flash board, which is like an advisory board for, for targeted six months. So you can make an ask, like we meet once a month, but I would think of who are the SMEs you need yes. and ask them to be on your advisory board. A branding person, an SEO person, you know, whoever you want, somebody who does um, social entrepreneurship fellowships, right? Nice. But I think a flashboard, one, it's short term, so it's not a long term ask. It's not like an advisory board. There's no fiduciary responsibility like a board board, you know? but it might be a good short term thing to test out who your SMEs are. Yeah. You just want to have very specific goals each month of when we meet, here's the thing I'm going to ask for help. Just about. You know, I, I like that idea. Um, yeah, open to that. Thank you. That's great. Anybody else have any other questions? James, go ahead. So this just popped into my head. Um, at the beginning, we were, or, or you mentioned that some conversations you were having kind of never move to the next stage, Linda, right? For whatever reason, maybe they thought they couldn't afford you, maybe for whatever reason it might have been, but there was a little bit of a concern with you about how that might improve, meaning how that conversion piece might improve. Um, and Jen and I were actually bouncing messages back and forward about business models. I just wanted to emphasize that and not let it get lost in the chat for you, is build a model around your business with the, the, the problem in the center. And here's why. Well, there's two reasons why conversations don't move forward. One, you haven't shown enough value. Two, they maybe aren't clear about the real problem that you're solving. Um, but part of this is really about you being able to show very quickly how you solve the problem that they should have already suggested that they have, right? Mm -hmm. So... Speech, even though you're very articulate, unlike me, um, you it takes a lot for us to try and absorb information and try and build that in our head to go, well, what does that really look like? 
Whereas if you build a visual model about how you walk people through your solution to yeah. get them to this to get them to the answer that they want, that happens at something like 78% faster, right? We absorb visuals much faster than we do um, verbal. So I would always advise people to build a model. And if you want to see a really good one, check out Simon Bowen. It's called the Genius Model. It's a Venn diagram, right? That's what we We have five different Venn diagrams for five different models in our business, all right? That right. might help you as you're explaining what it is you're going to do for someone, right? Yeah. And again, happy to talk to you how that all works if you want it. But I, I would certainly be thinking about that if your conversations aren't moving forward. I appreciate that. Thank you. I have another question and it's an important question because it's where I've had challenges for me to sell a project. I have to tell the, first of all, have a, a meeting with the client, then come back and say, this is what I heard. And this is what I think you need to do. But they also want to know how you're going to do it. How do you prevent that client from going elsewhere? Once you've given them your solution on how you're going to help them with that to get other bids or to do other things. And that's something I just want to put out there for you because I've spent on one government client hundreds of hours putting a proposal together to everything they wanted. And then they had a change at the top and I had to start again and it was virtually impossible. Um, you want to think about things like that. I think what I, my solution is when I'm getting into a deep dive and doing things like that, I have to charge them. I could take it off their overall invoice later or do something, but I just want to throw that out there because there's quicksand out there and that's some of the quicksand that you may run into. Yeah, I keep running into that. Yeah. Um, anybody else or otherwise, Jen, last question of um, the day for Belinda. So here is our final question for you. What can our One Million Cups community help you with today? Honestly, I think the community has provided it. But um, these suggestions and insights, I will go back and study. I think what, what I would appreciate is what you've offered, which is indoors that I can follow up with later to ask questions and to continue to connect. So your, your community is my ask. Great, 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 great. Let me just mention uh, that some of the people who are here may be people who can help you fill in those holes in your expertise. I'm not going to name them now, but I'll, I'll leave that seed of idea with you. Next slide. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Next week's presenter, uh, Tommy Marks, I believe. Yes. Tommy Marks. Now, someone's going to have to help me with the acronyms. Speak up from the room if you have a clue. About the CRM is something, 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 started on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, Tommy Marks is an expert on small business resources or resources, minority business development and in, in our neighborhood. Um, so he should have a very interesting presentation next week. Um, he's been someone we've heard from before and it's been great. Um, you want to become an organizer. Uh, an organizer is somebody who helps us put this program together. But it's not just for the benefit of this program, it's for the benefit of the organizers. It's a challenge of leadership, collaboration, marketing, and coaching. And so you can uh, gather the opportunity to strengthen in those areas and gain visibility for your business. Uh, do you like friends? Do you have too many friends? Join up with us. With that. <laughs> I like that, Ken. That was good. I might use that in the future. Um, upcoming <laughs> events. There are many upcoming events in our community. We draw many of them from the Central Fairfax Chamber of Commerce events calendar. 
here are some of the ones that are uh, standouts. Uh, tomorrow is the Virginia Department of Small Business Symposium uh, at George Mason University. And on the 17th is the BL Networking Business Expo. This is a gathering of small business owners in uh, Fairfax City. Uh, it's usually an extraordinary uh, program. And the Rest in Chamber Networking Night on the 28th um, at Fogo de Chao. If you've never been to Fogo de Chao, it's worth the trip. Uh, next slide. On our presenter schedule, we have Tommy Marks, as I mentioned, next week. We have Kaizen Fitness on the 15th. Um, kind of sketchy, but we'll get that solidified. But there are lots of opportunities. You have seen how we help business owners in this program week after week after week. We can help you and we can help people you know. Bring them in so that they can see how we operate and then uh, maybe they'll step up so that we can help them. Next slide. Help spread the word. Connect with us on social media. When you see a ping from us on social media, pass it on. We would like to spread the word more broadly, as broadly as we can, and you are key to that. Um, next slide. I think we're done. Um, stick around for a while to, uh, to schmooze, to network, 